Punch breakdown. Number 13 coming at you. Can you guess who? I just put it out on Twitter. But it is the champ. Today we have Emily Dakote. Gardenia is our highlighted fighter this week. Coming in fresh off of one of the best knockouts you'll see all year. James says, I love the Phantom Punch breakdown. I binged these like two weeks ago. I feel like you tell us that every week, man. I appreciate you so much. So <laughs> let's get into it, shall we? With the championship master class. Ooh. Yeah, get yourselves ready. Get your popcorn ready as we close out the show here. With a master class, as we said. Many remember the highlight real knockout. However, Dakota did a wonderful job of varying her counters in a st oh that was quick. <laughs> she did a wonderful job of varying her counters and establishing a foundation with her striking in the short duration of this fight. The jab can be a very useful tool since it can stabilize and reset the opposition, but it becomes completely useless when you do it from too far away and back up at the same time. Really pawn was Daniel Taylor. <laughs> Dakota throws a step up inside low kick, which creates a threat. Right away with the inside low kick from Ghost. <laughs> Flaccid double jab with head angling forward is the beginning of the end since Dakota recognizes this pattern through her high guard. Remember this position. Step up inside low kick draws out check. The check is a good defense for the inside low kick. However, it stops the user from moving and user is now on one leg. Outside parry over a half committal jab loads up the rear straight and rear pivot. <laughs> rear straight punch. Just, rear straight just lands while the opponent throws off, throws an off balance looping hook counter. The hook counter is off balance since the lead leg is elevating while the hook is being thrown. Dakota pulls back and remains defensively responsible with her high guard. Defensively responsible. I love that wordage. Dakota wisely varies her counter to the opponent's uneducated jab by throwing the rear straight to the floating rib. Rear pivot generates power. Boom, right on the rib. Dakota again varies up the counter to the predictable and uneducated jab by throwing a step up lead head kick. Bink. Pink, long and black over here. <laughs> Hooking off the jab is an underutilized combo and great against the high guard. Unfortunately, since the opponent steps forward, instead of changing position at an angle, this great move has been rendered useless. Good rear counter attempt misses by Dakota, but remains balanced while the opponent is out of position. Attempting techniques to see if it works. No foundation. Just throw the inside low kick at the wrong distance and hope it lands. Dakota throws an inside low kick at the correct distance, but it's checked. The opponent reaction of checking has become a foundation to build off the inside low kick.
Opponent attacks with the cross hook combo on a straight line. Very honest striking. Rear post off the high guard pushes the opponent off balance. Step up motion draws out the opponent's check, but the direction of the high kick is but the direction of the kick is high. This is a great example of building off the foundation of the step up inside low kick. Of course it does. <laughs> opponent never once threw a lead leg push kick in this fight, yet has decided to knee slide to see if it forces a reaction. Dakota doesn't react since there is no threat of danger. No threat or danger. No, because it's Danielle Taylor. <laughs> Focused on the lead hook threat, Dakota maintains her position since there's no threat of the lead push kick. Looks like she has like Superman, <laughs> Superman um, lasers coming out of her eyes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, rear straight connects over the top of predictable hook. Same position from earlier in the round. The pivot generates power. Smack. Bang. Yeah. Pow. Hair hell of hard. A moderately intelligent fighter would probably think, that was painful. Maybe I should do a better job hiding my attack so I don't get cracked like that again. <laughs> moderately intelligent. That's fucked up. Wow. Dude. Shade. <laughs> That's fucked up, ghost. That's fucked up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Please, dear, y'all don't watch this. I know. Yikes. <laughs> Dakota goes back to the inside low kick to stop the opponent from moving and to keep the opponent honest. This was a great performance. My goodness. Yeah, it really was. But, I mean, again, it's Daniel Taylor. Like, <laughs> there's not a whole lot, you know? But hey, a lot of people have not been able to do this, Steve. Yeah, that is the no, thing. No, I mean, Whaley couldn't do this. It's true. You know, think yeah. about that. Crazy. Defends the low kick by using the hip hinge to retract the lead leg. And that is not a knock on Whaley, you guys. Do not eat me alive. I'm just saying. Look at no, it's Dakota is the only one to finish Taylor in this fashion. Um, beautiful rear low kick counter to the back of the thigh off the missed inside low kick. She's just got. A very awkward style. <laughs> but Dakota figured her out beautifully. Yeah, she a master had a, class, a as great, Joe says. She had a great game plan going into this fight. And it sure paid off. <laughs> Coming yeah. up soon, in a matter of moments here. <laughs> you can just feel it. Step up motion causes the opponent <laughs> to react with a check while the kick goes high to the arms. And so Hiam also couldn't do that. Let me point that out as well. Just it's true, man. It like Daniel Taylor's been in there with a lot of great fighters. Yeah. That didn't finish her. Mm -mm. Dakota used a Wonder Boy step up style feint, but to her opponent, it just looks like another inside low kick is coming. Prepares the check. Sidekick lands on the solar plexus while the that's opponent dirty, standing dirty. on one leg because of a low kick that never came. Yeah. Yeah. Filth. That's so Filth. fucking dirty. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. She was locked in, man. Like, just watching this at this pace is like. Kind of like her perfect fight, you know? Oh, yeah. Even though the inside low kick is checked, tactical failure. Going back to the inside low kick is a good long-term strategy since Dakota can build off the quick re off the check reaction from her opponent. Uh, if the fight hadn't ended early, <laughs> that's great. Because uh. <laughs> here it comes. Dakota sees the flaccid jab attempt by the opponent and begins to load the rear straight. There's the flaccid again. The flaccidity. Powerful shot to the floating rib. Step and pivot generates power. 
Last week we had crotches. This week we have flaccidity. <laughs> opponent attempts pointless feints while circling. Feints are supposed to look like a threat of a real attack, but opponent keeps backing up while fainting. Quite bizarre. More backing up while fainting. Dakota does a great job closing the distance while the opponent backs up towards the fence. Another shot to the ribs there. Dakota maintains her stance while the opponent telegraphs her jab to hook combo. Dakota recognizes that the opponent is using the same pattern of attacking on a straight line while dipping the head towards the rear hand. All oh. of Dakota's body weight is behind this beautiful right cross counter since she pivots her, her rear leg and transfers her weight to the lead leg. She Second time break. this has happened. Look at Taylor uh, just fucking oh. dead. Dead. Dakota bounces into South Bot to regain her balance. Oh, God, it's coming. <laughs> Recognizes open stance oh. situation since the opponent is in orthodox. Well, Dakota is in South Bot. Pivot of the lead foot preps the rear high kick. Oh, lead arm swing and pivot increases the speed of this beautiful high kick. That's I just got chills. So I just got chills calling that. <laughs> My so God. Filthy. Holy shit. That's wow. So nasty. Let's That's see that again. Such a nasty fucking kick. I legit got chills from calling that. That was crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Ugh. Dakota's opponent is the most risk-averse fighter in MMA. <laughs> she just tries to survive instead of fighting. Her opponent's entire strategy revolves around not getting knocked out. This, so let's really appreciate this highlight real knockout. This was more <laughs> trolling and talking shit about Daniel Taylor than it was giving praise to Emily Dakota. No, no, no. <laughs> good, a good balance, a fine balance. Um, Dakota, a striking summary. Dakota did a great job of varying her, her counters off the opponent's jab. She would throw a counter cross, a straight right to the floating ribs, or a step up high kick. She also created a foundation off the inside low kick. She kept throwing the inside low kick, even though it was being checked. Knowing that reaction, Dakota would kick her opponent's arms with a step up high kick while the opponent was off, was on one leg to off balance the opponent, or she would step up with a Wonder Boy style sidekick. This is a unique triple attack from just the lead step, the lead leg step up that more fighters should be using. Clearly. <laughs> more of the strikes Dakota threw had some power, yet her opponent decided not to make any adjustments. What are some of your theories to why Dakota's opponent did not respect the power of the strikes that were being thrown at her? Here are some possible <laughs> theories. A, bad fight IQ. B, overconfidence in her chin's ability to take strikes. C, since she beat Hom, Penne, Ruiz. Yeah, I forgot to mention that too. And Aguilar. She thought Dakota would be an easier fight. D, other. Well, <laughs> here we are at that point of the segment. Steve, I don't know about you, but I feel it's a little bit of a mixture of all three of those options. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially in this fight, like, y you haven't seen, like, a very bad fight IQ from Daniel Taylor in her fight, say, against, like, Whaley or whatever. But in this one specifically, horrible fight IQ. Terrible. Very, very bad. And Dakota was just, like, on her game the whole fight, she went in there. You can tell that she went in there, had a game plan. She knew what Daniel Taylor was going to do or not do. And she was able to take advantage of it. And that's why you saw such a beautiful head kick knockout. Yeah, very well said. And I think that it has helped maybe to uh, just kind of see from Dakota's side and really analyze the career of Daniel Taylor. Whereas with Danielle, like he mentions, and what is this uh, uh, kind of see since she has been in there with so many, you know, talented yeah. fighters and, and made it either close enough or beat them yeah. in certain cases. It's like, she wasn't worried about changing things up. Like I said, with Mackenzie Dern earlier, you're not going to learn or feel maybe the same necessity of making certain improvements or adjustments until you suffer a really bad loss. So 
hopefully, in theory, Daniel Taylor should learn a lot from this. Should. You would right? think that should. she would we'll bounce see. back. <laughs> you would think that she would bounce back from it and do maybe be more active rather than be defensive. Yeah. And her defense really didn't work out against Dakota in this fight. I mean, obviously, she got head kicked to hell. But also, it's one of those things where, like, you've already been fighting for so long and fighting this way. Like, is it too late to change it? I mean, it's never really too late, but a lot easier said than done, right? So, we'll see. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've talked about... in We've, we've covered Danielle Taylor, her, you know, her fights. We've talked about her fights, break, broken down her fights. Yeah. Previewed them and, and, and whatnot. And she's just a tough one, tough one, tough opponent for every, for any, any fighter. Um, this is crazy props to Dakota and her team though, for doing what they, what she did against. A very some checkers team. in that one. Yeah, for sure. So very nice. And I think that this was probably the first fan of punch breakdown where he asked a question about the opponent at the end. So that's kind of funny making history, but Holy shit. I have thoroughly enjoyed these last two fan of punch breakdowns. I enjoy all of them, of course, but these last two, like give Invictus some fucking love you guys. Cause they obviously got some absolute killers. Jessica Del Boni last week, the, the, uh, maybe uncrowned champ. However you would like to say one of the best Adam weights in the world. And now, the strawweight champ, yeah. Emily Dakota. I can't wait to see her back after a stellar master classing, as you said. Um, Cintro, popcorn ready, as you said, to top it off. Scott said, thanks, guys. This is a great podcast. Thank you, Scott. I'm so happy you tuned in and found us. I know you've been supporting me for a while. Thank I appreciate you, it so much, man. And, uh, you know, we found us uh, this past week once, um, I think, once Pat came aboard. So, also, Pat is here. We'll get to the plugs later, but... Uh, Alvin says, came back just in time. Yes, you did. Jin, laughing at Flaccid. <laughs> Fair enough. I had to hold myself back as well because I'm very immature. Uh, James says, did Ghost, yes, did Ghost just say Flaccid <laughs> with the, the sweating brow? He said it a couple times. <laughs> yes, he did. Hmm. Um, Stamina says, Ugh, send that exact block of text to Michelle Watterson and Macy Barber. Air Jabbers Deluxe. <laughs> Not wrong. Uh, Central says, Flaccid, that's one who described her jab. <laughs> Damn right. We got vocabulary on this show. Uh, Jimmy says, man, ghost going into Daniel Taylor technique today. Flaccid on educated. <laughs> he went, he kind of went in. On yeah, he did. I mean, the, uh, the fictional quote was absolutely excellent. I'm um, hoping that they don't watch this fight. Yeah, that would be, this that would be <laughs> not, we have nothing. I have nothing against you, Daniel Taylor. I think yeah, you're delightful. Absolutely not. Uh, Mr. Lee says, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. I know. The anticipation was very strong in that one. Like we knew uh, what was coming. Yes. It's Rue says, Masterclass, man. this must be a good fight. Well, that was the whole thing right there, Rue. That was literally the whole fight, which yeah, you watched the, awesome. You watched the fight. Uh, James says, is this the first time Ghost broke down an entire fight? Uh, yeah. Yes. I mean... No, I feel like he did one... Like, involved it, a full fight in one. A full but fight. Like, was like, it with Hum... Hum... Hum Saki? Uh, Miu, yeah, I guess technically you could say he did break down like the whole Miu fight pretty much, pretty much. That fight wasn't very long, but this one was centered around that fight, so eh, I think it's half and half, James. Good, good question, though. Um, Jen says, Ghost love the arrows. <laughs> I think he's saying he saying two ghosts, he loves the arrows, yeah, very <laughs> nice. Uh, Jimmy says, Geez, that rear hand landed hard. James laughing, probably a flaccidity again, uh, or the shade, the shade thrown. Jin says, OFG. Uh, Ghost is not happy with Taylor's technique. <laughs> Stamina says, I'm here for all the barbed assessment. <laughs> this was different. It was a little it was good. Yeah, this I one. mean, this this was a good one, you know, and he, he, he definitely threw a little bit of shade in there. Yeah, he says, and that exact move Dakota just did is what got Whaley slumped, oddly enough. Uh, James says, great job, Ghost, of showing how to build a foundation. Yeah, Jimmy says, using a tactical failure as a long term plan. Great stuff. There's the knockout. Stamina says, oof, that's pretty ass fuck. Alvin yeah. says, I'm kind of disappointed, Mr. Phantom. Oh, but what is it? What is up with the ne negativity? Ms. Taylor did her best. I love you, Alvin. I really, really do. 
James says, Ghost is trolling Taylor this week. Man, I love this one. God, I hate Taylor style. Glad this happened, says Jen. <laughs> oh my God. Inviting it. Uh, James says, man, Ghost. Well, Ghost not having Taylor's technique. Hell of an incredible performance by Ms. Dakota, but I'm going to give credit to Taylor credit. Going to give credit for trying her best. Oh man, I love Alvin. I love him so much. Still, Ghost says, great performance by Dakota, but I had to call out the BS from Taylor's side. Just horrendous. Hey, he's being honest, you guys. All you can ask for. Stamina says, there are no participation medals in this sport. Mr. Y, one need not to do their best, only to do better than their opponent. Oh man, we got a poet up in here. Stamina, this is why we love you as well. My goodness. Rue says, I like this new spicy way of talking about opponents <laughs> while never saying their name, mind you. <laughs> so, ultimate shade. Nah, Mr. Lee with the emojis. Ghost says, you will like the next one I have, Drake. I am sure I will, my friend. They are all excellent. I can only imagine. Um, and yeah, he says, Miyu versus Hamasaki was the first full fight I did. So yeah, yeah, that was pretty good call by Steve remembering that and then, you know, putting that. But it wasn't completely centered around that one. But uh, yes. That does that should count. That should count for sure. So, my oh my, what a show it has been! What a fan of punch breakdown that was. Like I said, legitimate chills calling that one. So, thank you for that, Ghost. I love those moments that MMA doesn't give me that much of them anymore, but we get them on this show. So, awesome <laughs> stuff. 